something I want to do is um, tell you all that you have a great leader for your TNI. I think that um, you know uh, Mr. Sanders' vision to have a session to bring in a special facilitator um, and to review what it is that you all have done um, is really, really important. And one of the reasons why, and I don't say this lightly, but Barry is probably one of the most disciplined and focused managers that I've ever met. And so I think you should give him a round of applause. He has made, uh, helped to make my life a lot easier in my transition in this position. Um, I next want to commend you all for the work that you've done. Um, the T and I have said it before, is probably the single most unifying uh, program that this administration has started. And it really does set the bar for collaboration between uh, inside and outside of county government. One of the things that Mr. Baker encountered when he came to the county government was a lot of people who uh, knew what they were doing and they were working hard, but they weren't working together. And predominantly because that was not the culture of the government. It was more siloed and it was not cross-functional, cross-departmental communication. And T&I was one of his ways to uh, make that happen. Um, uh, I had a chance to read through the materials um, that, I'm sorry, your last name is Henry, 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 that uh, Henry put together for the session. Because I didn't want to say anything that was going to contradict that. And so I figured out that what I'm going to say is not going to contra contradict that. But as you go through today, I think one of the things that's important as you do strategic planning is understand that strategic planning is not necessarily what it used to be. And that's predominantly because the world moves a lot faster now and the environment changes and, you know, uh, organizations that, you know, create these very detailed plans that tell you everything that you're going to do and when you're going to do it. By the time they finish writing it, everything has changed. So, What's really important, I think, today is for, um, as, as Henry has laid out and will lay out, is to understand um, what the county executive's vision is. And I think we all understand that we want to make this uh, one of the best places to live and best work and visit. And that he identified a long time ago that our beltway communities that are challenged are the ones where we can, you know, lift the tide. If you focus on the areas that where the most challenges are and you can lift those, that's the way that you really lift, um, you know, of all the ships. Um, so understanding that is important. Understanding why you want to do the things that you're doing in your particular TNI area uh, and understanding what you're going to do. So why and what is really important. The how gets to be the thing that by the time you figure out how you're going to do it, it changes because things change so fast. So I think it's less about how, and I'll give you a second reason why it's less about how. Uh, because we put together an inventory of um, a toolkit, and he mentions that Henry does in his materials, uh, put together a toolkit, toolbox, inventory, whatever you want to call it, of services that uh, will be delivered through the TNI program. And we are about to do a review of that inventory. And that inventory is really the how of how you get things done. So <coughs> we're going to do a review of that inventory for uh, two primary reasons. One is that one of the challenges that we have is that we don't collect all of the data that we need to collect for every service that we deliver. There's certain key information that has to be collected. We have to know where we're delivering the service, and that's not just the, you know, 5,000 block of St. Barnabas Road, and you have to have an address, otherwise you can't put it on the map. With a zip code, it's got to be something you can send a letter to. Um, we also have to report every time we deliver the service. It's very important. We have to report it in a way that the county staff team can meet Henry's new goal that he just did. <laughs> um, and so if the data is a mess, or the data is on paper, or the data is not given in the same format, then it can't be rolled up to be able to report. And you have to have documentation of every service that you deliver. So on Monday, in fact, um, we're going to be meeting with the department heads to uh, express to them how important it is that they go back and look at the inventory that they have 
make sure that it's something that we're actually delivering and can deliver and tell us um, where they're doing it, why they're doing it, and what the service really is. And when we get that information back from the department, we will go through it and we will pick out those services that we want the T and I teams to focus on. And those will be services that are tied to the county executive's um, vision, um, A, and B, with some input from what's needed in, in the community, what you all know on the ground. And by doing that, by picking out a few services, so the department has 100 services, and we pick 10, we make sure that for those 10 services, we collect the data that I just told you, where they do it, um, that they have documentation, that, and that it's, 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 it's um, collected in a way that is reportable. And so we'll make sure we do that for those 10 services so that when you deliver the service, or when the departments deliver the service under your coordination, that we can map it and we can create some cause and effect relationships between the improvements or lack of improvement in a particular area and what it is that is delivered. The last two things I want to say are, um, one, that you know, we had a meeting yesterday about, to, to drive a point home a little bit more, we had a meeting yesterday about the meeting on Monday. And one of the things that the county staff team pointed out to me was they gave me an example of six schools. Three of the schools were pretty, were performing pretty well and three of them weren't. They had the same number of students that were on free and reduced lunches. They had the same, de similar demographics. Two of the high, higher performing schools were in the TNI areas, and two of the lower ones were in the TNI areas too. So they didn't challenge communities. So what's the diff What's going on in the schools that are doing well versus the schools that aren't? And the only way that you know that is if you know what's being done in a school and what's not being done in this school. And unless you unless you have the data to know where the programs are being delivered, who they're being delivered to, then you can't decide what we need to do to improve those schools. So that's just an example, a clear example of why you have to collect data about the services that you're delivering so that you make decisions about things that need to change. And the last thing I want to say is, have you all ever read, anybody read the book Gung Ho? Nobody's read Gung Ho, you should read it. And, but I'll tell you the, what's in the book really quickly, and um, it's a great message for this team. They, they talk about three things. They talk about um, the way of the squirrel, the way of the beaver, and the gift of the goose. Okay? And the way of the squirrel is the squirrels squirrel away food and put it away for when it gets cold so that their family will have something to eat. So that squirrel that goes out and does that and squirrels away the food knows that they're doing meaningful and worthwhile work. So it's important for you to know that the work that you're doing is making a difference, and it is. The second thing is the way of the beaver that if you ever see a beaver build a hut, or they do it different ways. They don't all do it the same way. So you're not telling people how to do their job. You're just telling them what it is you want them to do once you build that hut. But depending on what your strengths and weaknesses are, you may do it differently. So people are fulfilled in what they're doing. And you don't necessarily tell them how to do it. You just be clear with them about what you want them to do. And then the gift of the goose is really just celebrating when you achieve success. And so I like to close what I'm saying by you all should celebrate what it is that you've done so far. You push the county executive's um, uh, vision forward in a way that he probably did not expect would happen in his first term. And I think you all should be proud of what you're doing and, and continue to follow uh, your leader uh, for this team. Like I said, he's a great guy to follow. Minutes. I want to thank Brad for uh, those comments. I think the county's lucky uh, to have Mr. Singer. He has a, a clear vision of what the county executive wants to uh, uh, achieve. Uh, it is our job as, as employees, not just as DCOs, but to make sure we implement that goal and objective. So, you know, we're excited about the TNI, but we're also excited about where the government is going. And that's only because of two people like Brad and the county executive. So, Let's give them to a round of applause. And applause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not, not for a lot of people, but to see two people that really care about a government, that really care about people to make a difference, 
that goes a long way. Uh, because at the end of the day, you can go in and talk to both of them and get positive results, and you know you can move the government forward. So I just want to let you, you all know that. I know you, sometimes you don't see all the details doing the work we do, but it's because of these two people uh, that we really make things happen. So again, at this time, I want to thank you, Brad, for your comments. I want to thank you for your leadership. And this guy loves data. You know I mean? He loves the data. So we got to stay on top of the data. So at this time, I want to uh, invite our county executive up. You know, the good thing about what you see this morning, these two gentlemen took time out of their schedule to be here this morning. That's great. I mean, I mean, what they got to do to run a government this size and still come down here and talk to us and be with us today really means a lot, not just to me, but to this TNI group. So again, thank you both. Uh, I, I too, I want to thank uh, Barry and the team that they put together. He's doing a great job. Can we give him a round? <laughs> you know, we talked about Brad and, and the. the Getting this initiative together, Brad's done a great job. We're lucky to have him. Um, I didn't read what is the book, Gung Ho? Yeah. I didn't read Gung Ho. You know, Greg gives me a list of books. I probably never read them. But I did read Team of Rivals. <laughs> did anybody read Team of Rivals? See? Some people read Team of Rivals, right? So in Team of Rivals, the essence of the book is how Lincoln put together his cabinet. And what he did was he got together some of the brightest people he could find. Whether in fact they really, you know, were for him or against him to be president, but it really the idea was to bring together really smart people and allow them to do their job. Little known fact that people who are around me have to hear this all the time is John F. Kennedy, who I like a lot, based his cabinet on Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt based his cabinet on Lincoln. Lincoln based his cabinet on Washington. So you go back to Washington and he put together some of the brightest people. The essence of that is you put together what I wanted to do, and what you're allowing me to do, is to get together some of the brightest people in Prince George's County, give them some of our most difficult problems, and let them go solve it. That is why I ran for county executive. Not because I had the answers, or not because I knew how to solve the problems, but what I wanted to do was really allow people to bring their talents, all their talents, diverse talents, to bear on some of these issues. And see if we did that, and we tracked it, whether we could make a difference. That's why what you're doing in TNI is not just a marketing strategy. It's not something that should end with this administration. <clears throat> it is really the philosophy on how you do government from now on. Not just in Maryland, but throughout this nation. If you think about this, if we're able to accomplish what I think we're going to accomplish, Everybody in this nation will be writing about how you perform and how you deliver government different where, where it means the most. If you look at, we did it, we looked at what you've accomplished over these two and a half years. It seems like you've been at it for six years. You know, this is something, I mean, Brad is right. When we first thought of it, I said, okay, it will take, you know, at least the first term to get it off the ground, and then I could use that to run for another term. You know, say, hey, you know, I've got this thing that, you know, we're going to do. Instead, what you've taken the concept and you've really built it and we're starting to see things happen. And so with that, what will, what will allow us to do is to be able to track in the next administration how you establish it for the long term. And I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. Um, what I hope we would do with T&I is respond the way our first responders do, whether it's fire, police, you know, um, when there's a crisis, and that is, they immediately go out and call and 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 and, uh, and help. Well, we did that with every part of government, every service we deliver, whether it's you know picking up trash, whether it's providing jobs, whether it's housing, whatever it is, and now that we've integrated our education system into it, whether it's providing quality uh, uh, education throughout Prince George's County in a way that touches people in real, real time. That will change how people think about us. And um, at the end of this term, whether it's one term or two terms, at the end of the term, what I hope somebody will come up from one of your areas and say to me is, 
you know, I doubt it. From the very beginning when I heard T&I, I thought it was a, a scheme. You know, I thought it was a typical host of politicians who always promise you that you would, they would do something. And you know, and they, they don't, the smoke and mirrors. And after they leave, there's nothing left, except for the promise that never happened. What I hope is that somebody will come up to me and say, you know what, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe that we dial 311 or county click, or that if I said to somebody in the t and area, we need to deliver this, that it actually would happen in the last man of Oxen Hill. But you know what, it is. So it wasn't just a gimmick. It wasn't just hype. It wasn't just about getting reelected or getting elected. It was about actually making a difference in people's lives. That is what I hope will be the legacy. And I can't do it. I can't. You know, as much as I may want to, I can't do anything. It's all about you. I may get the credit or the blame. But it's really about your work. And that's why, you know, we're so proud of what you've done. And I think Brad is right. You should celebrate that and celebrate what you're about to accomplish. Uh, because you're going to change lives in this community and the way services deliver throughout the country. Thank you.